So you're watching this channel. That means you probably collect this stuff. But the real question is, are the dealers screwing us? One stacker on a journey to find silver. International stacker. All right, guys, well, this uh, video is based off a lot of comments I got in previous videos, um, you know, about gold and silver bullion companies and LCSs, and are they screwing us during these um, most difficult times? Uh, real quick, over 70% of you guys watching are not subscribed. Please subscribe, smash the like button. And right now, I just had added to my channel. You can join as a membership, so check that out. And yes, you are God tax exempt. Um, but what I really want to talk to you guys about is... Are the dealers screwing us? I received multiple, multiple comments um, from people on certain videos, one where I interviewed a bullion dealer in other places. They're extremely passionate, um, and, and they were basically convinced that all the dealers, all the LCS shops are out to screw us. Um, do I think there's elements of that? Possibly, but let me break down uh, my viewpoint and give you my perspective and yes before you rage quit I have supporting evidence um, so let's go through this together so first I'm going to cover online bullion dealers the situation between LCS's which is a local coin shop and online bull bullion dealer is pretty different in this regard and for all you OCD folks let me perfectly square that shot uh, there there got it so when we're talking about online bullion dealers um, I'm talking about Atmex, JM Bullion, Provident, all the big boys. So my contingent is that at least the online bullion dealers are not screwing us for two reasons. And let me break that down for you. Reason number one, supply and demand. Not that, excuse me, I just burped. Not that long ago, you could go to any of these, um, online bullion dealers and buy all the silver you wanted. You know, four, three, four months ago before all this nonsense started. So I went to each of the bullion sites and I picked one of the easiest things and one of the most common things to get, which is one ounce bars. This is the one ounce bar section on Provident, nothing in stock. This is the one ounce bar section on, Prov on uh, Atmex. There's nothing in so stock. There's only two one ounce bars in pre-sale and one of them is their own they're making and one's the secondary market. JM Bullion, nothing is in stock. It's all out of stock, in stock alert. Um, SD Bullion, of all their bar, they don't even have that many one ounce bars listed anymore and only one is in stock. Bold Precious Metals, which you guys is one of my new favorites. Um, I like them a lot. I'm probably going to do a lot of my online shopping with them. I used to go Provident and the others, but everyone's charging tax now, and even Bold is now. But um, you got to put in the bigger orders. But look, I went to One Ounce Bars, and they're smart. This is marketing, guys. They put silver bars and rounds together because they don't have that many, so it doesn't look bad. But look at the silver bars. One, two, three. They only have four options for silver bars. If you've been buying silver for a while, I think you all can agree with me. This is crazy. We've never seen um, shops, at least in recent time, this short on stuff. So what does that tell us? There's a shortage. So what do we have going on right now? This global pandemic, some call it a pandemic. Um, whether we think it's real or not, or whether we think the numbers are inflated or not, it still has had real consequences on the economy. It's had consequences on shipping. I just finally got a package that's never been updated the tracking. You know, USPS is having major issues. A lot of the mint shut down. I just watched a video yesterday from Silver Heist how the US mint had stopped printing uh, 10 ounce gold eagles. And don't forget, a lot of these mints and places producing this stuff has been shut down. Guess what else is shut down? Mines. Guess what one of my favorite TV shows is? Um, gold Rush, Gold Rush Alaska. And I just watched an update episode where they're not even mining yet because everything's shut down. People can't get across the border. So reason number one I don't think they're screwing us is supply and demand. Everything's based off supply and demand. But let me show you one more reason I really like bold. Look at with the spot price of 19. I mean, with the what's going on today, these prices I think are very good. And actually, look, Aztec calendar bar 22, Aztec calendar bar and SD bullion 25. Okay, bold precious metals. 
Anyways, what's the second reason? Online bullion dealers do something called hedging. And the cool thing about JM Bullion, who bought Provident Metals, FYI, um, is they actually have this section on their website. But basically, all the major bullion dealers do what's called hedging. Why do they do this? Because swings in the market. So if, here, let me run you, there's a, there's a explanation here that will actually tell you about it. But basically what hedging does is it puts a short position against a long or a long against short. So long positions for bullion dealers is considered any silver that they have in their inventory, physical silver, and also any silver that they have coming from mints or whoever they bought it from. So any silver they have in their possession or on their way, that's considered a long position. A short position is considered any unfilled um, order, any order that's been made that is unfilled. So here's an example of how the hedging works. Now, basically what they do is they go on the paper market in the COMEX and they buy paper contracts. So here, the dealer has 5,000 ounces, okay? Uh, of gold for 1,200 an ounce with the wholesale markup. Wow, how, you guys, remember when gold was 1,200 an ounce? Not that long ago, that's crazy. Um, all in the dealer uh, has 3,000 ounces in open orders. Okay, so they had 5,000 ounces. They sold 3,000 ounces in gold. That means they still have 2,000 ounces in their possession. Now consider this. If those 2,000 ounces they have in their possession, gold goes up $200 an ounce. They just made a ton of money. Gold goes down 200 an ounce. They just lost a ton of money. Online bullion dealers do not take that risk. Online bullion dealers depend on high volume sales to make their money. So in this scenario, um, they still have 2000. So in the example of the scenario, if the dealer did not hedge their inventory on the long position of 200 ounces, because remember they sold 3000, I'm sorry, 2000, they sold 3000, they have 2000 in their inventory, which means they're 2000 long. Okay. This would mean that if the gold spot was to move up $200 an ounce, uh, the dealer would make a profit of a million dollars on their physical inventory while losing 600 on open orders, leaving them with a 400,000 net game. Does that make sense? So if they're hedged against that, it accounts for that. In the opposite situation, when gold moved down to $100 an ounce, the dealer would have lost 400,000. With the property, with the properly hedged inventory in the same scenario, the dealer would have shorted 20 future uh, contracts of 100 ounces for a total of 2,000. This in this scenario, if the spot price was to increase by 200, then the dealer would have made the million on their inventory in the same and lost the same 600,000 on the open order. So does it make sense? They have a set amount of inventory, a thousand ounces. They hedge short a thousand ounces. So if gold goes up, they lose this. It's a wash. If gold goes down, um, they have the short. It's a wash. So it's a way to protect yourself. When you're a major company dealing with thousands of ounces of inventory, you can't afford uh, to, you know, play the, the market. Now, this leads us to LCSs, local coin shops. Um, I want to tell you a short little story of something that happened to me in not recent past, or it is the recent past, but not too recent. And I specifically waited to tell the story because I don't want to badmouth any um, LCS out there I've gone to in the past. But I went to this one LCS and I said, hey, uh, do you have international or global coins, global silver? I'll buy it to you by the way or buy it from you by the way. And usually when I, when I say that, I get it at weight melt price. Uh, but then uh, what happened is he weighed it up, gave me the price. I'm like, whoa, that's super high. I'm like, what did you charge me? And he had charged me something like $15 over spot. And part of me wanted to rage and just be, leave and be like, what the heck? But I said to him, I'm like, dude, 15 or are you crazy? I said, I told you I'd buy it by the weight. I buy this these type of coins all over the US at spot price, at melt price. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. And then he redid it and he sold it to me at melt. So was that a bit unscrupulous? I think so. Uh, He's straight for what for $15. I believe it was either $10 or $15 over spot. Ridiculous. I understand if he went $2 or $5 or whatever, but he went for the kill. However, I know a lot of local coin shops, a lot of businesses are dying and failing. So I know people are just trying to stay alive. I get it. But side note, make sure you always check the prices and things you're charged in the way. Okay. But returning back to the story, um, 
that shows you what can happen with the coin shops. And in general, coin shops are not big enough to hedge, okay? So if a coin shop is not hedging, um, then that means that they're at risk of these big swings. But there's one concept I wanted to talk about with LCSs, and you can see I have it up here. It's called replacement cost pricing. So basically how replacement cost pricing, that's how most LCSs work. This is a Barber dime. Um, is say that they bought this dime for $15, okay? At the time they sell it, Okay, I might give a Okay, so they bought this dime at $15. At the time they sell it, this dime is now worth $25. So somebody would say, well, they bought it at 15, they can sell it at 17 and still make $2 profit. But how LCSs work is they charge the replacement cost. So although they bought this for 15 and they could sell it for 17 and make a profit on it, they're gonna sell it what it costs to replace this. So if this dime now costs $35 and they bought it for 15, they're gonna sell it for 35 or 38 probably to replace it with this one. So this is called replacement cost pricing and this is what a lot of um, LCSs work on. Um, it's much more, it's much riskier for them uh, than hedging. Hedging is makes it very safe. I mean, there's still risk with hedging but it makes it a lot safer for companies to do it. But when you're doing replacement cost pricing, that's kind of what occurs. So you can have coin shops that just totally go under, um, depending on the swings in the market, if they're not, if they don't have enough capital and they're not ready to deal with it. So keep that in mind. LCSs are going to in general charge more. LCSs are going to low ball you and try to get things for as cheap as possible because they've got to account for the swings in the market and try not to be put out of business. You know, they don't have millions of dollars of capital. A lot, of, a lot of these online bullion dealers have and sells. And let's face it, folks, with online bullion dealers, it's kind of killing LCSs, I think. It's going to be sad when there's no LCSs in the future because I feel like we're headed that way. The only use case really for LCSs I see is people being able to sell, um, come in, they get coins from X person died, grandpa died, they go somewhere close, sell it, and they're done with it. And then they get the money, they're happy. The coin shop probably does really well. And, you know, a lot of the coin shop owners I've met are extremely honest. Um, I've never met one that was overtly, like, dishonest. I mean, you could argue the guy charging me 10 to 15 might have been a bit dishonest. But as soon as I brought it up, he's like, he backpedals like, oh, okay. And he didn't know I was a YouTuber at the time or anything. So he didn't have that pressure on him. Um, I've had two or three coin shop dealers be like huge jerks to me and just treat me like trash. One was in Arizona, um, one was in Washington, and they're just like the biggest jerks to me. And one of them I still bought because it was a good price, but the other guy I was like, yeah, I just left. I'm like, whatever, man. Um, and the second guy I didn't buy from, he was a bigger jerk. The first guy was just like a baby jerk, baby jerk, da -da -da -da. the second guy was a bigger jerk. Uh, but anyways, I've kind of gotten off on a tangent here. What I'm trying to say is LCSs, it's a lot harder for them to survive and hedge and these different things. So they're going to charge more, try to pay less. So if you ever need to sell, and I'm going to make a video on how to sell and buy cheap like I do. But if you ever need to sell, you do not want to sell to an LCS because you can make more money on the private market. But that comes with dangers. And then finally, I'll just say pawn shops. You guys, pawn shops are like the pit of hell. Um, never sell stuff to a pawn shop. You're going to nine times out of 10 get screwed. However, I have found some epic, epic deals in pawn shops. So don't discount pawn shops for buying because sometimes they don't know what they have. You know, sometimes they might think something's garbage or not worth a lot. You might go in a pawn shop and see a CYOTNO and they might be charging spot for it. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to just another average stacker for making this for me. Um, and yes, I'm still holding this hostage, by the way, the Gigaga win from Yankee Stacking and Silver Dragons. That's my hostage. Anyways, guys, so I kind of wanted to break down why I think the online bullion dealers aren't screwing us with kind of that evidence I showed you. And I mean, go to any of these sites, guys. Supply and demand. When, when supply is low, price goes up. More people want it. Like, look at, if I go here to bars, I just showed you, let's go to a five ounce. It was, look at this, they have one five ounce in stock and it's a cool shell, but it was not long ago on these sites you go to and they have all this inventory. They have two 10 ounce bars, everything else is out of stock, are you kidding me? So, 
I just kind of want to throw this out there. And, uh, you know, companies need to survive, guys. Companies have overhead. Companies have taxes. Companies have shipping. Uh, disaster X happens. Employee Y stalls. Shipment X got lost in the mill. All these companies have overhead. So you're never going to get things, for the most part, at spot from these. And for the most part, you're going to pay a premium. And I think we've been very fortunate to pay the low premiums we've been paying for so long. I hope that the prices can return, but for the prices to return, society needs to open back up. People need to, mines need to start mining silver. Mints need to start minting silver and making these different things and get them to sell. So, I mean, that's my outlook on it. Maybe it's flawed. I don't know. But I try to base everything I see on here with some sort of like evidence. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with me? Am I totally wrong? Have I sold out to the man? Look at this. Only $3 over spot, 209 over spot. Even this coin, 525 over spot. You guys, when the premiums go high, that's when I buy coins that usually have a high premium because it's somewhat mitigated. Does that make sense? And I only buy those high premium coins if I think I'm going to flip them. So that's just kind of a little nugget there. Anyways, everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the rambling. Hope this made sense and helps you be more informed in your purchases. And I guess we'll say, catch you on the next one. Oh. Oh. You have gained access to a classified area. Classified? We got to get this out of here. All right, guys. See you later.